Oh. Oh man. Yeah, it's like Tucker people work for like decades just so they can do a set in front of people I know with their name in gigantic letters. You're like, get that away. <laughs> Not ready for that yet. <laughs> They're my name in bold font. Um <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, greetings and hallucinations. My name is Nathan Hall. I am what's commonly known as a stand comedian. Uh, please, round of applause for John Norris for putting that video together with me. That was awesome. Yes. Very cool. Um, yeah, uh, I made a, a deal with myself that uh, when we were going to do another tube tie, that wasn't going to like just do the same set that I did last time. Because I'm like, you know, people pay for it. So we'll see how this goes. Let's start here. My friend Eric wants everybody to know that. He got turned down for a job at Hot Topic for not being punk rock enough. Those were the words verbatim. <laughs> uh, the thing is, um, Eric is the most punk rock guy that I've ever met, okay? Like, he has all of his belongings in a duffel bag, it's like filthy, has like a exploited patch on it, right? Like. <laughs> Depressing stories about doing meth under overpasses uh, with uh, pregnant chicks. Okay, like he should have his punk card by now. But what they told him is, is that like this is on the application, and we're going to frame it. I have to frame it because I have a house. He doesn't know where to put it. But on, on the application, uh, there's a minimum requirement of tattoos and piercings. There's a point system. <laughs> There's like one point for dyed hair and then two points for larger tattoos. I wish I was making that up. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, people of the counterculture, myself included, those things that we did to each other, uh, tattoos and these piercings we thought that would make us individual and unique, they are now mandatory flair. <laughs> That's where we're at with the culture now. Like, I seriously doubt, like, and I realize I'm like bitter 30 steps through, but at no point, people that started doing punk rock, like, uh, late 70s, like, the Sex Pistols or Richard Hell, whatever, at no point were they just, like, sitting around shoving rusty uh, safety pins in their ears and going, like, hey, man, one day, what we do is going to be a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> For kids in Ohio, <laughs> we're going to have to work. Shitty at strip mall jobs <laughs> for minimum wage. Uh, I'm jealous of the fact that uh, people, a lot of people in Coots, uh, I should say, have scars that tell cool stories, right? I have none of that. Um, like usually, like the two I hear the most is is like you should have seen what happened to the other guy, or I really regret having so many abortions. Okay. <laughs> But I don't too early. Okay. Um, I have like two, and they're the worst story ever. It's like basically like, hey, apparently on two separate occasions, I'm really clumsy when I make macaroni and cheese when I'm stoned. Just doesn't have the same effect. <laughs> so I'm going to cut out like all my drug stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just something different. Um, oh, yeah. There is a, a, a phenomenon within uh, pornography uh, facials. And just briefly, let me explain, okay? Here's the thing about it. Now, first of all, if a woman agrees to this to begin with, she's a peach, okay? <laughs> Let's get that out of the way right now, okay? I never even thought to do it if I had watched the porn, okay? But we're at the point now that you can't just do that. You can't just, or maybe just have three hours of nothing but that, but you have to have catchphrases while you're doing it. There's some guy who is worse for it. He makes his entire living by doing that, but every single time he's got it trademarked, he just goes, drop and load! <laughs> Which is the grossest and most unimaginative thing ever. Right? There's so many better things you could say, like, oh my gosh, I'm almost about to go number three. <laughs> My penis has a cold. You could say Yahtzee. That would be better. Just Yahtzee. Yeah. That's, that's my catchphrase. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of sharks. Uh, they're one of my favorite animals. I'm big on Shark Week. I wish every week would be Shark Week. And uh, I've learned a couple things about sharks. I want to pass along to you guys. Okay. 
<coughs> be a story, learn something in Discovery Channel, okay? Um, I've learned that um, sharks, they're enormous, and everybody is scared of them, especially great whites, but you maybe shouldn't be because they have the stupidest look on their face at all times. Every single shark, like, as it goes, like, <laughs> like, borderline, like, he'd be super excited if we were going to have, like, an ice cream float. Like, that kind of special. Okay. Right? <laughs> but the thing that they tell you to do, of course, is, like, if you encounter one, the, the best defense is you, uh, is you punch it right in the face. Okay? Now, you guys can probably tell from my physique, Xbox it. Okay? That was yours. <laughs> but then we all agree that all of us do our best boxing underwater. <laughs> Just a lot of slow motion uppercuts. So you get Mike Tyson's punch out and it's got stalled or something. Um, I, uh, I come, I was going to say, I'm, I was born in Minnesota, but I spent a lot of time in the South. I'm not proud of it. It happened. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had a chance to go down to the deep south. Do you fucking avoid it? Uh, maybe your car broke down. Uh, maybe you lost a bet. Maybe you're in political exile. But just don't do it. Um, here, uh, something that I learned is that uh, if you ever go to Powder Springs, Georgia, as I did, where the Klan still gets to march in the parade, okay? Can you get more white than that? Okay, in Powder Springs, Georgia, you ask them where's a good place to eat, they will tell you without a trace of irony, like, you should go Rufus. It's a good place to get about to eat. And it's spelled the way you don't want Rufus to be spelled. <laughs> and then they will add, like, it's a great place to go for a first date. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, agnostic, which means that I'm 35 years old and I still have not figured out if I believe in God or not. And Southerners do not take well to shades of gray, okay? <laughs> I informed uh, someone in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when I uh, was there, uh, that I was of the agnostic persuasion. And, uh, not cool, woke up the next day, and uh, there was uh, these dudes in white sheets on horseback, and they had burned a question mark into my front lawn. <laughs> I used to be really militant agnostic, but I would just get people's faces like, Hey man, you know I don't know what I know, but you don't know what I know, so just back off. <laughs> My least favorite commercial ever, that I think they finally stopped doing it, is the I'm Thinking Arby's. This is what that ad should be. It's like, it's 2 a.m. We've been drinking since 2 p.m. <laughs> I have to get up and be on a bus at 7, but you assholes are probably still thinking Arby's. <laughs> I love old gangster movies where they have one of my favorite phrases ever. Is, is they, 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 uh, when there's like a robbery, they're like, your money or your life. That is the dumbest choice ever, right? Like, who's the one person that's like, no man, you're not taking my money. You're going to have to kill me first. <laughs> So then, <laughs> the robber shoots him, and then the other guys were like, we're going to take the money, right? No. <laughs> we had a team. <laughs> he made his choice. <laughs> Sleep in his own bed. <laughs> oh. uh, most most amphibians do not die of natural causes. Um, and I'm, I'm okay with that, like, I, I know that, you know that going into it. Um, it's not a matter of, like, if I will die, it's just, like, how, I just want to be able to control it to a certain extent. So it's like, I don't know if you would call this suicide, but this is my dream, my vision, okay? Is that I'll get one of those inflatable rafts, and I'll climb up to, like, a really tall uh, building, and then I'll swallow it, and then I'll jump off, and then, like, halfway through, I'll pull out the ripcord, and I'll just explode, like, it's Tex Avery cartoon. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to pass along something. Uh, the, uh, the the darkness is coming. I've been here for like four years now. It still has, uh, it affects me. I don't know if it still affects you. But um, here's something you can do instead of just I don't know maxing out another credit card on liquor and just trying to see what's on Netflix right now. Okay, there's other stuff you can do. There is my favorite is just to stick a fork. Uh, in front of someone, and then you just pretend that they're in prison. You know, like, <laughs> 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 
But the better thing is to listen to the song Message in a Bottle by the police. Only because you're going to replace the word bottle with butthole. I dare you get all the way through it. If you don't smile, it's already too late. I'm a big fan of horror movies. But the Purge series is bullshit. Okay, hear me out. It's kind of controversial. Okay? <laughs> big, big stand here. The Purge argues that if there's this anarchy day where all crime is legal, right? That's the new holiday, whatever, wedged in summer between Independence Day and uh, Labor Day, I guess they were implying. That's uh, the only crime that anyone wants to commit is murder. Really? That's it? There's so many others. I don't know, what about guys like me? Like, maybe I just want to take that day and not call ahead before I dig. <laughs> maybe I am going to fill out your construction permits, but it'll be wildly inaccurate. <laughs> maybe I'll go buck wild. Maybe I'll ignore all of your zoning regulations. What do you think of that, man? <laughs> this person at work was giving me shit because I was not participating in the flood drive. I said, I have no problem with the Red Cross at all. My grandfather was there so much, we thought it was a vampire. It's cool. Just don't do it. And they're like, no, it's not that, it's not that you can't. You just won't. I'm like, no, I can't. There's, uh, I think, city, state, and federal laws preventing me, maybe even international laws, from donating blood. You guys have probably been there. You've been through that time in your lives, right? You're in the airport in Guam, you know? <laughs> and you're like, I know I got to hold on to this kidney that I got from Iraq. But I kind of also want to get my ear pierced. <laughs> and then the tattoo artist, like, one thing leads to another, and you're like, when is the next time that I'm going to get to have unprotected anal sex in a storage lot? <laughs> I can turn my hands of time. <laughs> oh, um, I love jokes that, that have happy endings. Um, I want to tell you something that amazing that I saw, which is that there was an entire conversation, it was almost a novel, that was just written down in graffiti around a men's room stall uh, at, I believe, a Home Depot. So here's the, the awesome thing about it, right? Like, so it starts out with the usual stuff that we know from the gentleman's room. I love that phrase, like, except there's monocles involved and top hats. <laughs> oh, after thou, you know, to the pig trough, right? Okay. But the thing was, like, it started out with the usual arguments, like, one person strenuously argued that corn ruled. Somebody else just said, oh, no, I, 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 I defer that it is uh, perhaps Tupac that rules. <laughs> so, so you have these two competing things, and then it gets, but there's a lot of, you know, not very nice words spoken back and forth. It gets weird at one point where one of them says, I don't know who the fuck you are, but I got a horse. And then there's just dots after that, like just dots, like they're texting each other. And then, this is the best part, by the end of it, they had grown to be friends. They were going to hang out later. They had discovered that there is a way, there is a world in which both Tupac and Korn can rule together, consecutively. That's the kind of world I want to live in. Um, I don't know if you guys have a chance to uh, be on the People Mover. Uh, that is a pleasure. You have some amazing conversations there. Uh, my favorite thing about uh, the bus is the advertisement that they have for it, uh, where it's, um, it's it's the shitty like 95 Windows thing or whatever, which I know helped us defeat the aliens in Independence Day. But settle down, okay? All right. But the uh, it just says like advertising on the bus. Not as expensive as you'd think. That's it. Nothing else. No follow-up to that. What else was Don Draper pitching before that one stuck to the wall? Advertising on the bus. You could just set your money on fire and throw it in the streets. Or give us a call. Some people think it's sad that I've eaten so many frozen burritos that I've been given a free t-shirt. <laughs> Some people call that a cry for help. I call that uh, naming gold and reaching them. Okay? <laughs> keep reaching those rainbows, kids. Stay in school, keep doing drugs. 
A um, couple things real quick. I wanted to uh, say that uh, I've had several bosses uh, in the four years that I've been here, and uh, the main requirement to apparently be in charge of me is that you're a dude um, who will constantly remind me on a regular basis that this is not his first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get the bigger paycheck. Um, I have. I have this crazy dream, I have this vision. People say it'll never happen, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the rodeo, but just that first time. <laughs> because apparently the standards are abysmally low. Right? Like you could just go in, you could drive a Cadillac to the middle of it, you could set the barn on fire, you could have an affair with the announcer's wife, like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, sir, it's my first rodeo. <laughs> we expect. <laughs> Does have a point, Bill. <laughs> that is the loophole. <laughs> My little brother, uh, he got in trouble for cheating on a test, and uh, he, just, he there wasn't that big of a deal. He was so lazy when he was cheating that he had like the URLs of like where he had stolen stuff <laughs> off Wikipedia. Like he just was literally printing it off. Okay, did he bother like cutting and pasting? And uh, he's, he's like, well, come on, everybody's done that. I'm like, no, yeah, many people probably have. But no one's done that for an ethics final. <laughs> You're pretty much the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, and I'll leave you this. Uh, Luke, oh, I was trying to explain to him the difference between first world problems and third world problems, okay? First world problem would be this. I would be like, Luke, you now live in an amazing world where you can watch any movie that has ever been made just by like clicking a couple buttons, right? But you're not going to. We're just going to sit around arguing all night about which depressing genocide documentary we're going to watch. <laughs> That's first world. Third world problem, are flies food? <laughs> oh, is that too mean? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's do one letter then. Okay, uh, let's do two. Um, I'll be able to do, I'll, I'll test them for the other comics. Okay, uh, two one layers. One, I think they should take pictures of missing transsexuals, put them on cartons a half and half. <laughs> okay. Uh, second question, legal question. Siamese twins, can they rape each other? That's just considered aggressive masturbation. I'm Nathan Hoy, the crowd. Thank you, good night.